Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt, and today I'll be teaching you how to script a Game Pass shop on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is head right on into the game, and as you'll see, on the left side of our screen, we have a button, and if we click it, it'll open our Game Pass shop, and then we can click Purchase on one of the Game Passes, and it'll prompt us for a purchase. Okay, so now that you know what the script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. Now just a quick note before I do show you how to script this, I'm not going to be showing you how to design the UI for this, um, but that can be found in the description. I'm just going to show you how to script the UI. So if you head to the description, I have a Roblox model link down there. You can import this whole thing into your game, and um, we'll get into configuring it later as we write the code so you can just follow that part of the video. Um, so welcome back if you just went down there and grabbed that model. Awesome. If you'd like to, you could always recreate this. You just have to follow the same format and same um, file structure. Um, but if you do, awesome. If not, just grab that model in the description. Um, we can actually get into coding this now. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new script underneath of this Game Pass Shop screen GUI. And actually, we don't want it to be a script. We want it to be a local script. Uh, and I'm just going to name this local script Game Pass Shop Script. But, of course, you can name it whatever you'd like. Um, and in here, what we're going to do is the first line is the only thing that you need to change if you got the model from the description. And this is just we're going to define an array and we're going to put in our Game Pass IDs so that it can generate these frames automatically. So we're just going to say local Game Passes equals, and then we're going to put this right here, and then we're going to put our Game Pass IDs. So maybe if we had Game Pass ID 1 and we wanted that to be maybe our first game pass we put that there and then if we want to add another we would put a comma and then we put our second game pass ID or our third game pass ID or a fourth and it'll automatically use this script that I'm about to show you how to make to generate the different frames for that game pass um, but for now I have my group so I'm just gonna throw in a table right here with my game pass IDs but of course you want to set those to your IDs so that the players can purchase your game passes um, after this, what we want to do is we want to get a reference to our local player. So I'm just going to say local player equals game dot players dot local player. Uh, and after this, I want to get a reference to the marketplace service. Now, if you're not aware, the marketplace service is what allows us to prompt users for Game Pass purchases or handle Game Pass purchases or dev products or anything that actually has to do with Robux or things outside of the game that involve currency. We use the marketplace service for that. So I'm just going to get a reference to it by saying local marketplace service equals game colon get service marketplace service. Now before we write any more code, I would just like to show you how this is actually structured and how this is set up. So if we just set this game pass frame, if I set that to visible real quick, um, let me just show you how we actually are going to generate the game passes. So we have something right here called a UI grid layout, and this makes it so that whenever we clone an object that's under the parent of the parent of the UI grid layout, so if the UI grid layout is in the same indentation of another object, whenever we clone an object, it's going to space it out based on the parameters we set in here in the properties panel. So this makes it really easy. We don't have to do any positioning. All we have to do is clone the sample frame and it'll automatically set it up so that we can use it. And we don't even have to do any positioning or sizing or anything like that. So I really like using UI grid layouts because they make it really easy for us to create things dynamically or make data-driven code in our game. So what we're gonna do, so we have our sample frame right here and underneath this sample frame, we have a purchase button, and this is what the player is going to click. And then we have a game pass image. And this image is what shows the actual game pass icon that you specified in Roblox. So we don't have to do any customization. It pulls this down from Roblox using the marketplace service. So it's very, very, very easy to set this up just by specifying our game pass IDs. So back to the script, now that you know how that UI actually is structured. Um, I want to get a reference to our game pass frame, which is right here. So let's create a new variable. I'll say local game pass frame equals script.parent.gamePassFrame. And I also want to get a reference to the sample frame, which is this thing right here that we're going to clone. I want to get a reference to that, and that's underneath the game passes frame. So we'll say local sample frame equals game pass frame dot sample frame, just like that. Uh, after this, we have one more variable that I'd like to define up top, and that is a reference to our toggle button. And this will just make it so when we click it, we, it'll, the UI will turn on, and when we click it again, it'll turn off so that the user doesn't have the UI on their screen all the time. So we'll just say local toggle button 
equals script, whoops, not sample frame, we'll say script dot parent dot toggle button, just like that. And after that, that's all the variables we have to define up top. Now we can get into defining some functions. Um, so the first function I'd like to make is a function to toggle the shop GUI. So if the shop GUI is not visible, we want to make it visible. But if it is visible, we want to make it invisible and we want to change the button text accordingly. So I'll say function toggle shop GUI. And then I'm just going to put two parentheses, right? Because it's a function. Uh, and I'll press enter and it's going to end it off for us. Uh, and what the first thing, so we want to see if the game pass frame right here, if it's not visible. So if game pass frame dot visible is equal to false, we're checking if it's invisible. So if it's invisible, then we want to make it visible when we click that button. So we'll say game pass frame dot visible equals true. Uh, and we'll say toggle button, which is that button on the side once again, dot text equals close. So we're going to make the, so when we click the button for the first time, it's going to make this UI visible and then it's going to tell us if we want to close it. It's going to set that button text to close. Uh, and then in here we can just say else. So otherwise, if the GUI is in the state that it is now and it's already open, then we want to make it invisible and set the text back to what it was originally. So we'll say game pass frame dot visible equals false and toggle button dot text equals game pass shop just to let the players know what this actually is. After this, I want to do, I says I think this is actually, yeah, this is our final function that we have to set up. And it is going to be the setup game passes function. Now this is a quite a bit of code. So if you're not too advanced with scripting, I suggest copying this from the description. Otherwise you could follow along if you want to learn a thing or two about it. But all this is going to do is it's going to pull each one of these and it's going to generate one of these frames for each one. So we have our first game pass right here. It's going to duplicate it and set some values. And we have the second one again, it's going to duplicate it again and set some values. So I'm going to name this function setup game passes. But of course, you can name it whatever you'd like. Uh, so set up game passes, and I'm going to put two parentheses because it is a function and it'll end it off for us. And then in here, I'm going to set a for loop that's going to iterate through our game passes right here. So we'll say for i equals one comma number of game passes do, and that'll loop through. So however many game passes there are, if they're two, it's going to do this two times. Uh, and I want to get the game pass ID that we're on currently. So I is the iteration, the index um, of this array that we're in currently. So we'll say local game pass ID equals game passes I. And this will just get, so if we're on the first one, it'll get this. If we're on the second one, it'll get this, etc. For however many game passes you have set up. Uh, after this, I want to get the game pass data of this ID from the marketplace service. So the game pass data includes the price, the icon, um, the description, the owner, a bunch of other things like that that are useful for dynamically generating these different values right here, these frames. So we'll say local game pass data, we'll create a new variable, equals marketplace service colon get product info. And the first argument we're going to pass in here is the game pass ID because we need to know what product is it. Uh, and then after this, we need to tell the marketplace service that we want to get the info of a game pass rather than a developer product or t-shirt. So we'll say enum.infotype.gamepass just to tell the marketplace service that this is a game pass. Uh, after this, I want to get the price so that we can tell the user how much the game pass costs. So we'll say local game pass price equals game pass data dot price in robux just like that and it has to be price in robux just because that's the way roblox sets it up um, so unfortunately you can't configure that specifically but it's not too hard um, to remember and then after this we're going to get the icon so the asset id as a number of the icon so we'll say local game pass icon the image for the game pass equals game pass data just like that, dot icon image asset ID. I know that one's long, so make sure you get the caps and the spelling and all that. Uh, and after this, we're actually ready to clone the slot as I was showing earlier. So we're gonna clone this slot for the game pass. So I'm just gonna basically say local game pass slot equals sample frame colon clone. And that's gonna do exactly what I just said. It's gonna clone this sample frame so that we can set the values in here for our game pass and we can prompt the purchase when they click on it and all that good stuff. 
So we're going to clone the slot, and then after this, I actually want to set the Game Pass image. I want to get this right here, and I want to get this right here. I want to get the purchase button for that slot, and I want to get the Game Pass image for that slot. So we'll say local Game Pass image, and this is just going to get a reference to this object, equals Game Pass slot dot sample game pass image like that uh, and then I want to get a reference to that purchase button so we'll say local purchase button equals game pass slot dot purchase just like that uh, and after this we want to set some values so that's all the variables for now we want to set these values um, so I want to set the parent and I want to set the name of this game pass slot you don't have to set the name but I think it's easier for organization uh, so I'm just going to say game pass slot dot parent equals where we're going to set it to script dot parent or game pass shop, which we have a variable for. So game pass shop. Oh, wait, do we have a variable for that? Oh, game pass is frame. My bad. Uh, and then after this, we want to say, we, I'm just going to specify the name. So I'll say game pass slot dot name is equal to game pass ID. Uh, after this, we can use these variables that we created right up here about the price and the icon, and we can actually set the text of this, and we can set the image ID of that, um, so that it'll specify the price next to this purchase button, and it will set the image to the image of the Game Pass itself. So I'll say purchase button dot text equals, and we're going to put two quotes because this is a string. I'm going to say purchase because we want them to know that they're going to be able to purchase it dash and then I'm going to do a dollar sign and an R just to sell tell the user that it's Robux but you don't have to put that if you don't want uh, and then we're going to concatenate I'm going to add onto that string game pass game pass price just like that so if it was this first one and maybe the first one cost 50 Robux it would say purchase dash Robux sign 50 if it was the second one and that cost 100 it would say purchase dash Robux sign 100 so it tells the user whatever the price is for the pass before they click on it uh, and then after this, I just want to set the image of this right here, of this object. We'll say game pass image dot image equals. And I know you normally think, this is actually when I was creating this, I thought this too. You could just set it to game pass icon, right? That variable we set up up here, that's the game pass icon. And because game pass icon returns a number rather than a string, it's not going to work because images have to be specified as string. The decal ID goes like this. We put a string and then we say RBX asset ID uh, colon slash slash and then we put in the numbers for that game pass ID or the image ID. So we'll just concatenate that with game pass icon just like that and that'll load in the image so that the users know you know what your gra graphics are or your GFX that you made for that game pass. Uh, and then after this we only have a few more lines for this function. We'll just say purchase button and I actually spelled button wrong, I realized that. We have to fix that. I said boat, and we have to say button. One sec, just like that, over there and over there. And we wanna change it down here. And we're just gonna get when this button's clicked so we can prompt the user for the Game Pass purchase. So I'll say purchase button dot mouse button one click. And I'm gonna connect that up to a function. And then inside of that function, we're going to prompt them for a purchase using the marketplace service. So I'm just going to say marketplace service colon prompt game pass purchase. Uh, and then our first argument, we need to pass in the player because we need to tell the marketplace service, okay, well, who are we, who do we want to prompt the purchase for? So I'll pass in our player object that we defined up top. And the second thing is I need to tell the marketplace service, what do we actually want to prompt the purchase for? We want to prompt it for our game pass ID. If it was a shirt ID, we do a shirt ID, but we want to use our Game Pass ID, so we'll just use that variable we defined. So to prompt the purchase for each one of these of the Game Pass that we specified, and that's actually all we have to do function-wise, setting up the functions. And now we can hook into events. Um, and before we do that, I'm sorry, I was wrong. We have one more tiny thing outside of this for loop. We're going to come after that end, and we just want to destroy that sample frame, just because it gets in our way and we don't need it because we've already cloned the other frames, so we'll just destroy it. Uh, and then after this, as I was saying, we now no longer have any other functions to define. We can hook into events, and the beauty of this is that we just set up functions so that we can call them wherever we want. So whenever we want to toggle the shop GUI, in this case, we want to toggle it when they press the toggle button. So we'll say toggle button, 
dot mouse button one click. I'm going to connect that up to a function. And then in here, we have one line of code inside this event. We'll just say toggle shop GUI. And it's that easy. And you can do this wherever you want to toggle the shop GUI. That's why we do it in functions. Um, and then after this, we have one more line of code for this whole script. And then we're all done. I'm just going to say setup game passes. I'm going to call our setup game passes function. Uh, and this will just set them up from this table up here, this array. And it'll make it awesome and ready so our users can purchase things in our game. So we can test it out, of course, once more. And actually, I do suggest you set this to visible before you test the game. But as you see, we can open it like that, and then we can close it. And it loads them in automatically. It creates our game passes, and we have the circles, our images. Uh, and whenever we click purchase, it'll prompt us for a purchase. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the paste bin link with all the code shown in this video, along with the Roblox model link with all the assets in this video in the description. And I'll see you guys later.